Good afternoon, Algebra 1. Um, we're going to talk about 8-9 perfect square trinomials and factoring those. The thing that you've got to, to know is they could be factor, factored. You could break apart the middle term. You could do A times C and, and do the factors of A times C that have a sum of B. Uh, you could do that. But if you've got a perfect square here and a perfect square here and the middle checks, it's easy to use these patterns. Okay, so how do you know if it's a perfect square trinomial? Well, you gotta look at this term. Is this a perfect square? Is this a perfect square? Well, that's when I start saying, okay, those are perfect squares. What's the square root? Well, the square root of this is 4n. Because this is a minus, I need a minus. The square root of 9 is 3. 4n times negative 3 is negative 12. Doubled gives you negative 24n. That checks. So it's factored. Okay? Now I look at this one. 16x squared minus 32x plus 15. This is a perfect square. This is not, so I cannot factor it that way. Does it factor? Yes, but not like a perfect square. All right, let's look at this one. x squared minus 10x plus 25. This is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. Even if this would have been a plus, it could still work because this is a perfect square and this is a perfect square. Okay, square root of x squared is x. This says I need a minus. Square root of 25 is 5 x times negative 5 is negative 5 x doubled is negative 10 it checks so it's factored okay let's look at the next one m squared plus 8 m plus 64 this is a perfect square this is a perfect square so i'm thinking square roots m this is a plus so this would have to be a plus uh the square root of 64 is 8 this times this is 8m doubled is not 8. So this is not a perfect square trinomial. It might factor another way, but it looks to me like it's prime. Okay, when I'm solving, okay, now I put this one in because um, this is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. I think it's kind of easy. This says it's going to be a minus, so I'm going to get x minus square root of 9 is 3. x times 3 doubled gives me 6. That checks. This is going to equal 0. Okay? So to solve it, this, is, this gives me a double root. Remember, this means I have that same factor twice. The quantity x minus 3 times the quantity x minus 3. So both of my answers are going to be the same to make it equal to 0. Now, think about it. How do you get rid of a square? You do a square root. So x minus 3 equals 0. Square root of this gets rid of that square. Square root of this is going to stay the same. x minus 3 equals 0. x equals 3. Double root because there were two of them. Okay? Now if I look at this one over here, 25k squared plus 20k equals negative 4. Well, number 1, it doesn't equal 0. Okay? So I want to set it equal to 0 first. 25 k squared plus 20k plus 4 equals 0. That's a perfect square. That's a perfect square. So I'm thinking square roots. 5k square root of 4 is 2. It's going to be plus because this is a plus. 5 times 2 is 10. Doubled is 20. That checks. Okay, so square root of both sides. 5k plus 2 equals 0. Uh, that means that k is going to equal negative two-fifths. Okay? All right, what about this one? Okay, now I put this one here on purpose because it's kind of the same as this one, except instead of equaling zero, it equals 25. But I know this is a perfect square. I mean, this is the same as x minus 3 quantity squared. But 25 is a perfect square. I can do the square root of 25. That gets rid of the square. Square root cancels the square. 
So I've got x minus three. This is where it's a little bit different because the square root of 25 is positive or negative five. Okay, how do I get rid of minus three? I add three. So x equals three plus or minus five. Well, three plus five is eight. Three minus five is negative two. Now, if I would have set this equal to zero and solved it the regular way, I'd get the same answer, but perfect square, perfect square, do square roots. So on this one, I'm gonna do those square roots. The square root of cancels the square, and so I'm gonna have x plus three, and I don't need parentheses anymore, equals plus or minus seven. How do I get rid of plus three? I subtract three, but I'm gonna write it as a negative three, minus three, minus three. I wanna put it first. I always put it first because some people do it wrong. All right, so negative three plus seven is four, negative three minus seven is negative 10. Both answers will check. Okay, so I'm looking at this, I'm thinking perfect square, perfect square, perfect square. So hmm, let's do square roots, because if I subtract 64, that's not gonna be a perfect square. So square root of this is W, square root of this is two, this says it's gotta be a plus. So when I do the square root of both sides, that gives me that W plus two equals plus or minus eight. Well, how do you get rid of a plus two? You subtract two. So W equals negative two plus or minus eight. Negative two plus eight is six. Negative two minus eight is negative 10. Okay, two answers. Square says I should get two answers, unless they're both the same. All right, let's look at the last one. This one's a little bit different. If I do the square root, okay, this square, square root cancels the square, and I get y minus three equals plus or minus the square root of six. Well, the square root of six is irrational, so I can leave it that way. Okay, how do you get rid of a minus three? Add three. So y equals three plus or minus the square root of six. Done. Okay, I can leave that just like it is. Okay, I think there's one like that on your homework. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.